Happy video day guys. So today we're going to be trying a brand new palette that just finished releasing from Wayne Goss. So if you guys saw my Make Up Your Mind, you knew I was going to pick up the new Wayne Goss Imperial Topaz palette and it finally arrived. This palette does retail you 55 US dollars and you can purchase it at Beautylish. I will have everything linked down below, but I went ahead and picked it up. I was very interested more than the color story in the formula because there was a lot of claims that Wayne Goss said about it, about being more for mature skin. There was things that really intrigued me. I wanted to test this formula out for myself. And if you guys watched my Make Up Your Mind, you guys knew that this is going to be coming up because I did say in that video that I was deciding to pick it up. If you guys haven't seen that video and you want to check it out, I will put it up here. So it's finally here and we're going to put this thing to the test. I'm gonna give you guys as much information as I can because this is not cheap. <laughs> this is not cheap. So I definitely want to make sure that you guys are making the best decision that I can possibly help you guys make before you guys buy the palette. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna run this down for you guys. I'm also gonna be doing two different looks. I'm gonna take this from day to night for you guys to see how well we can transition these looks, to see how easy it is really to use from day to night. So if you guys are new and you've never seen me before, I'm Christina Brooke. I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. What we do is talk about makeup and on the weekends, I like to sprinkle in a little fashion. So if you guys like those things, please hit that subscribe button, join the family. And yeah, let's get into the Imperial Topaz by Wayne Goss right now. So inside of this palette, you are getting six different shades. You're getting two mattes, three satins and one celestial shade. You're also getting a pretty nice little compact here with a nice little mirror. It's a very simple design packaging, but it is pretty nice. It's made in the USA and it does have a sticker here on the back. Now let me show you guys the swatches of the palette as well so you guys can kind of get an idea of every single shade that's in here. This is under daylight so you're going to get a pretty decent idea of what these actual colors look like. So now that I've kind of gone over what the palette consists of, let's go ahead and let's put this on my lids. I'm going to walk you guys through me applying it for the very first time, tell you guys what I'm thinking as applying it and yeah, let's get into that right now. Ready to jump into the palette. It's here, sitting on my desk. I can't wait to put this on my lids. I am contemplating what kind of look I should do. So what I think I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna start with a look that would be a very day look, and then I'm gonna transform it and deepen it to make it like more nighttime. I think I'm gonna start off with this color right here first, and I'm just gonna kind of put that all over the lid. Just kind of like, I'm interested in this formula. That went on really, really easy. That's a pretty color. It does have shine to it, but it's not very reflective. Actually, it looks, it looks pretty. It looks pretty. This is also a shade that I think that you can probably just put all over the lid, like a wash of color, and it'll probably look really nice too. Um, it's pale, but I'm a light medium skin tone and it comes up pretty nice, so. The reflectiveness is not very high intensity at all, but it does have a little shine to it. Let's jump into this matte right here. I use that on the outer edge for this first look. Just want to see how this plays. That looks really pretty. That's nice. Okay. It's very, it's a soft brown and it goes on very soft and it blends very easy. I'm gonna kind of try to deepen it out a little bit just to see. That worked really pretty, so that's really nice. I'm gonna just put this color and I'm just gonna kind of like dab that in the front A little bit of the brown again. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the brown and bring it under the lower lash line. So I'm really concentrating guys because I really want to really test this formula. The main reason I got this is for the formula. So I'm really trying to debate here whether I think that the price tag is worth 
the formula. I'm going to put some mascara on this eye so you guys can kind of get like an idea of a day look and then we're going to keep working with this eye for a deeper look and then we'll make a mouth match. All right so here's the eye finished with a little mascara so this is like a very day very work appropriate that you can create with this. I think it was very easy to accomplish this look and I think it's very pretty. So that's one side. Now let's play with the black. Let's deepen this out and let's see how this black works. Um, I've heard people say things about the black. Some people don't love that there's a black in here. Some people don't mind. I'm somebody who does not mind. However, I don't want one in every single palette. I said it before, I don't think it's needed. So I'm gonna jump in to the black and I'm just gonna use actually Wayne Goss brush and I'm gonna go in the edge and I'm just gonna deepen out the outer V. I'm gonna kind of make this a little bit more dramatic. So far, that's working okay. That actually worked really nice. It's not super saturated, so when you put it on, you can blend it really easy. It's not like super dark and it doesn't get stuck in place, which is good. I mean, especially for people who are not used to playing with black, it's definitely user-friendly. If you go in with a really, really dark, deep black, sometimes it can mess up your look. It's happened to me. I've gone in too heavy-handed with a black and then it's like very hard. I'm shocked. I actually thought that I wasn't going to like this black because I didn't know how I would feel about a really soft black. That's really pretty. Didn't do this side as good. So far, so good. I even messed up a little bit with the black on this side and had to correct it and it was very easy to correct because it's not so saturated. So this looks nice. I'm gonna jump into this color right here and I'm gonna pick it up on a brush and what I'm gonna do is kind of pat it on the lid over this other color and put it in between and kind of get an idea of what this color, ooh, that's a pretty color. Yeah, that's pretty. I wonder if I apply this with my finger, it'll give me brighter. Yeah, if you apply it with your finger, it comes off a lot stronger than if you apply it with the brush because it does kind of work a little bit like a metallic, but it it's very soft. So if you use your finger, you do get a little bit more intensity and it applies faster. So if you wanna just get a lot of pigment right away, just use your finger. That looks really pretty. Okay, I want to try, the, try this shade. I'm going to use my finger because this is like, oh, oh, oh. That's pretty. Did you guys see that? Look at that. Wow, that's so pretty. I like that. Okay, I'm just going to grab a little bit more of this cool shade. It's kind of like dab it up that's a really fun shade to play with I like that shade a lot it's unique that looks really pretty okay I'm gonna blow out the lower lash line with this color let's really have fun now let's go dramatic we're going for a nighttime look now I'm gonna bring it up around the black on the top too. That's really cool. Cool. Guys, I'm happy so far. I'm gonna grab the black, use it on the waterline. That, that worked good. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the blue, brown, <laughs> blue, the brown and black. I'm gonna mix them together and use it on the top lashes. Kind of make like a deep brown. Just kind of want to see how they mix. And they actually look like they're mixing really good. 
You guys can see how it's turning more chocolate. I think that looks really pretty. Okay, I'm going to put on some mascara. I'm going to try to make my mascara look as fake eyelashy as I can. And I'll be right back in just a second. All right, guys. And this is the final look. I just got a little bit of my pixie liner and smudged it on the lower lash line. So I put it on the lash line and then I kind of just smudged it out. I like to do that anytime I try to do like these deep, deep looks. I just love smoking out the lower lash line. And since I didn't pick up one of his liners, I decided to just grab one of mine. You probably can create a very similar look if you picked up his black liner. So this is the look. Okay. So guys, I have some thoughts. <laughs> I used every single one of the shadows and I even mixed shadows to see if I can deepen them and it worked very well, like really good. Um, the satin shades, which is this one, this one, and this one, these three here, they are not very, very intense. They're actually very muted, but as you build them up, they get more intense. Now I would say, like I told you guys in the tutorial, if you want it to be intense, like right when you put it on, you put it on with your finger, kind of like how you would work with a metallic, and it does come off stronger than if you use a brush and you kind of put it into your crease. I like the satin formula because it is different. I tried comparing it to a lot of the other palettes that I own that say that they have a satin formula, and their satin formula has a little bit more shine. The closest formula to the satin formula that I can find are actually in the Dior formula. The Dior formula actually has like these satin colors that they're not very high shine. They're more like a dull metallic, but they do have a little shine to them. It's kind of like this formula, but the Dior formula is a little bit more powdery and this one has a little bit more of a gliding feeling. I will say I like his formula better than I like the Dior formula. I thought that the Dior formula was pretty, but I didn't think it was as easy to use as I think his is. His is very easy to use because this metallic-y satin, this satin formula kind of glides and blends really well. So I just feel like I was able to build it up. I didn't feel like it went on patchy. It doesn't work like a metallic that you kind of like have to dab it on to make it like high impact. It's kind of like a matte with a little sheen to it. So it does have sheen is the other thing that I want to point out. So if you're somebody who doesn't like to work with sheens at all, those three satins do have a reflective sheen look to them. And I am not somebody who likes to put sheens in my crease because I think that they can create shadows. Because these are not high impact, it works different. It works similar to a matte, but it does have that reflectiveness to it. Now, none of these are high impact metallics. So you can use them in the crease and they still look perfectly fine. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm looking and they look perfectly fine. Now, if you like like those sharp, strong metallics that like when you put it on, you're like, oh my God, beam me up to space. This doesn't have anything like that. Then let's move on to the mattes. So let's go over all the formulas first and then I'll give you guys a little bit more details. The mattes themselves, I like the formula of the mattes a lot. I really actually enjoy it so much. I thought his formula was going to be similar to Charlotte Tilbury's and it's not. They're very soft and when you put them on, they feel like they kind of like go for days. The same as some of Natasha Denona's formula that when you put it on, they're kind of very silky. I think it's like more emollient. You kind of like put it on and just glides. His is a little bit drier than that, so it's not as much, but it is softer than your typical shadow. So it's not powdery like an Anastasia shadow. It's not powdery. It has a little bit more of a gliding feeling, but not as much as Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like the closest formula in mattes that I can get to this one would be the Tati Beauty palette. So the mattes of the Tati Beauty palette, they're a little bit less powdery, but and they glide a little bit. So I would say it's more like the Tati Beauty mattes. That's what the mattes remind me of. So the mattes remind me of the Tati Beauty formula and the satins remind me of the Dior formula. This really amazing shade here in the end is probably the most unique shade. It's probably the coolest texture inside the entire palette. And basically what it is, so it's like a no pigment shade with a bunch of little tiny itty bitty glitter particles. Now there's two formulas that I can compare that formula to is one inside of the Charlotte Tilbury 
you guys got the starry eyes to hypnotize there was this color right here next to in the seduce glow section that's kind of like a gray but when you swatched it, it was like a gray with all of these little tiny glitters inside of it and also inside of the Natasha Denona gold palette there was this one which is what I used for my makeup your mind this one right here this has a very similar look however the feeling is different because I feel like the one inside of the Natasha Denona feels a little bit more glittery so if I were to compare I would say it'd be a little bit closer to the one in the starry eyes to hypnotize the formula but it does have a little bit more reflex than the Charlotte Tilbury one this formula right here is very cool and I have it on right now it's super high impact and very beautiful I think that this is very unique very gorgeous so overall I have to tell you guys every single one of these cool formulas he did say that this was formulated for more mature skin I 100% think that that is true this shine that the satins have is not so reflective if you have more texture on your lids or you have more wrinkles on your lids these type of satin shades are not going to make them be more pronounced like I know for example my mother she loves metallic she thinks they're so beautiful but she always tells me I hate them on me every time I put them on she says I look older she loves Charlotte Tilbury's formula because she says it's one of the only that she can put on and it looks amazing and I've seen this in person and I can tell now this satin formula is probably going to look great on her too because it does do that really really nice shine but it's not super high impact and reflective so yes I think for sure mature skin is going to love this palette so it's not a unique color story at all guys like no um, I did my makeup your mind and I told you guys that I thought most people are gonna think this color story is boring I've seen it a million times over but I personally love the color story because it's the type of color story I like to use and I love the color pop I think I love you and that palette is gone from color pop and when I saw this it reminded me so much of that palette that I said oh my goodness if I can get that same kind of palette idea in a better formula I'd rather do it now because I know that that palette's it's basically going to be old very soon. I think I've had it for four years, so it's probably old. So from here, let's jump into a few comparisons then. So from the Make Up Your Mind, I did tell you guys that I thought I could dupe this 100% with the ColourPop I Think I Love You. And I even said that if we ignored the textures, I think that this palette would have every tone. And that ended up being 100% true. This palette right here, the I Think I Love You, has every single tone inside of it that's almost spot on exact. That the metallics are a lot brighter in the ColourPop one because they are actually true metallics. So the one that's like the whitish color, which would be similar to his glitter, it has a lot less glitter and it's more of a metallic topper. So for the most part though, this palette right here, every single shade, the metallics are actually satins in his palette. So that that's where you see a big difference when it comes to like shininess but if you don't care about that if you have this palette you have every single one of the colors you just don't have the formula but you have all the colors the next one is the icon palette so inside of the icon palette there is a lot of similar shades as well and this one is something that I believe to be a lot more mature skin friendly so I think that every single color in here I was able to find the first shade is very gold compared to his shade his shade is a lot more champagne and then of course I couldn't find like that really glittery metallic I just had to pick something that's a little bit more gold so those two shades are the only ones that are off but the rest of them you basically have them in here but like I said the metallics inside of Charlotte Tilbury are a little bit more reflective um, the soft glam was another one that you guys kind of referenced to me telling me that you thought you could find very similar tones and yeah I was able to find similar tones but the first shade there is no match for it because the only color inside of the soft glam is very very gold and then also like that orangey brown shade is actually a matte inside of the soft glam so that's different the one that's inside the wing gloss is actually like a satin if you don't care about that then you're totally okay and then of course there's really no glittery shit so I just come I just put the gold but you see so there's similarities you can create very similar looks but it doesn't have every single color but you are going to create similar looks. so since we talked about the Tati Beauty palette I do want to point out that the Tati Beauty palette was another one that I really wanted to compare it to when I got it and I will tell you it is a little bit closer to the Tati Beauty than I expected. The Tati Beauty still is a little bit warmer, which is what I expected to happen. The orange is a lot brighter inside of the Tati Beauty palette and it's also matte, whereas his is a satin. The brown is a lot deeper in the Tati Beauty palette compared to his palette. 
and of course that topper shade there is no topper shade inside of this palette that looks like his glittery celestial shade i think it's what it's called there is none here you have to use an actual full-on glitter so jaclyn hill was the other one that a lot of you guys said well i can dupe it completely out of jaclyn hill so i do want to show you guys jaclyn hill finally so the first shade in jaclyn hill is definitely not going to match because jaclyn hill's metallic -y kind of white shades are just way too light um, the last shade, I don't have anything that is glittery inside of this palette, so you don't have the Celestial. And finally, the brown inside of the Jaclyn Hill palette is a lot more crumbly than the one inside the Wayne Goss, so it's not my favorite formula, that actual brown. And also, the metallics in the Jaclyn Hill are a lot more high impact. And then finally, let me show you guys my Make Up Your Mind results really quickly. So I do think I was able to find these shades. I was trying to match them up by actual texture. And since I knew his were satins, I was trying to get things that were closer to mattes. And I do believe at the end of the day, I could have, like I said, duped it all with the ColourPop I Think I Love You, which is kind of what I was going to originally do in my Make Up Your Mind. And then I said, let me try to get the textures. So, so let me quickly round this up for you guys. I really enjoyed the palette. I think it's beautiful. I love the eye look. However, it's 55 US dollars. So because of the price tag, I'm going to tell you guys that I do not think that this is something that you need to run out and purchase unless you are dying for this color story in a compact, easy to take with you places palette. These are colors that you use every single day and maybe you have it in a large palette like the Tati Beauty but you don't want to travel with it. Maybe this is just so much more convenient for you. So I would say I would compare this more to Tati Beauty's formula and I think that if you love that formula and you want something like this, you want it to be easy to travel with, then I think that this may be worth it for you. The most unique formula in here is the celestial shade it's not something that i see all the time because the glitters are so fine and they look amazing so i don't think it's worth 55 dollars to pick up this palette just to get that color um, just to get this shade. It's very different from Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath is literally glitter and it's very strong and i was touching the texture of my Pat McGrath one it just feels different. This has the impact but it is very, very fine. So it just feels a lot nicer on the lid too. So I love the Celestial shade. I think it's the most unique in here. Now, the other thing I wanna say is the pan sizes in here are very, very big. They're so big. So, I mean, if this is like one, if this is going to be your eyeshadow palette that you're going to use every single day and you just want one that's gonna last you a long time, this might be good for you, but this is big. If I was Wayne Goss, my next palettes would be smaller pans with different colors because I want this to be like a main palette that mixes with the other ones. Do you know what I'm saying? And I would also not put a black in every single one of them. And if I really wanted to, I would split the pan and make it half black, half something else so that people don't feel like they're buying a million blacks in every single palette because black is a really fun shade to use. But this size black, we are never gonna go through. And if you have one in every single palette, it, it, it could be at the end of the day a waist shade for you because for $55, that's a lot, you know? Now the packaging, I think the packaging is fine. I mean, it's not the most luxurious packaging, but it's good enough. It's a million times better than what you get when you buy a Dior packaging. This, this is like plastic with no mirror. I mean, this is a lot more quality than something like that. So I think it's a good packaging. I love the mirror in it. I think everything, I like the size. I think this is a really good size. So if you're somebody who likes to travel, you know that even taking something like this in your makeup bag when you're traveling is a pain so i'd rather take this any day than even this so it's great for traveling i like a lot of aspects of it i do think it's a little bit on the pricey side but that's my opinion just for you guys now for me personally i really like this i think it's a great addition to my collection because this is a color story i like to use so this is going to be a very easy breezy color story for me to put on when i'm going to the office or even if i'm traveling like i said you can go from day to night it has a nice formula i definitely like it and i'm happy to have it in my collection it was a little pricey but i'm happy to have it so anyways that is my opinion on this palette i want to know from you guys down below if you guys purchased it what is your opinion do you guys love it are you guys thinking it's not worth it? Tell me everything down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later.